Guten Morgen und Willkommen. This is part two of my October ski road trip and I've lucked out again with my parking spot last night. I'm on the hill partway between Kunertal and Pittstow and well, come and check out this amazing view. More spectacular way to start the day. Austria sure is beautiful. Very different to Chamonix, less in your face, but still wow. This is much more what you expect when glacier skiing. A big car park at the bottom of the valley, followed by a major lift, in this case funicular, which takes you up through the mountain onto the glacier. It's a much bigger car park than at Kunital as well, so expecting a much bigger resort and much more pe many more people. Moment of truth, let's see if my prepaid ticket works. Success. We are going on the Gletscher and the Gletscher. We are going to the Might as well come straight to the top while I've got the visibility. 3,440 metres. This is the highest lift station in Austria. Indeed, the whole of the Tyrol. It's not quite the Iggy Demidi or the Klein Matterhorn, but it's not far off. The views from up here are absolutely spectacular. Over there, you've got the Bildspitzer, which I believe is the highest mountain in the Tyrol. 3,770 ish metres. So, not quite the highest in Austria. That's Gross Glockner, but that's way over that way. In terms of the ski area, this is much more like it. It's absolutely huge. No doubts that you're on the glacier here. Grass is about four or five meters from the side of the piste. It's from 3,440 meters. You can ski continuously on the same run all the way down to here. 2,688 meters, so it's pretty damn good vertical considering this is out of season. Snow at the top is super icy. Brilliant if you're on race skis, not great if you're on touring skis. But lower down here is pretty much perfect spin zone right now, so pretty nice. much more like it. This is kind of what you think of when you think of Austrian glacier skiing. Obviously the weather helps but it's a massive step up from yesterday. Kunertau felt much more like being in Scotland just at 3,000 meters whereas yeah this is definitely the Austrian Tyrol. It's a massive resort. You've got three different glacial basins with I think six lifts running, tons of vertical. There's even a little bank slalom here and a vellum barn which is basically like a kind of pump track or a load of rollers. There's also a border cross track over there, but that's closed. That's only for the professionals. We've got various international border cross teams training up here, much like you've got the ski race teams training over on the other side. Some 
that's if skiing in summer and autumn is very token, reserved only for ski racers so they can train year round and ski bums like me who can't live without being on the snow. And while the second part of that may well be true, this is very much not a token ski area. Yesterday felt quite token, but this is proper skiing. Aside from the fact that it's really quiet, it doesn't feel out, feel out of season at all. It just feels like I'm on a proper ski holiday, could be February. caught out a little bit. They closed the top lift to skiers at 1pm which is both frustrating and makes no sense because the pieces earlier in the morning were horrible sheet ice where just as they're starting to soften up now they stop you skiing them. The only explanation I can think of is that this portion of the glacier is very crevassed and maybe they're worried that as things start to soften there's more danger of people falling in the crevasse but it's only like the top centimetre or two of snow which is actually softening up. The base is over a metre deep here and it's well groomed, compacted, hard ice. So yeah, I don't think that's really an issue. It's just bizarre. But the bar up here is still open, so you can still take a ride on the gondola. You just have to leave your skis at the bottom, which is doubly frustrating, especially as anybody who was already up here before 1 p.m. was still able to ski down. So just to rub salt into the wound. So bear that in mind, if you are skiing here, make sure to get up to the top before 1 p.m. At least it's a scenic gondola ride anyway. I don't know if you're able to see it or not on camera, but that over there is Solden. Weather permitting, that's tomorrow's destination. There's a greater concentration of skiing in October in this tiny little pocket of the Austrian Tyrol than there is in anywhere else in the world, even in the Southern Hemisphere, which of course is their winter. They haven't got as many ski areas in this tight packed area open as they do here in Austria right now. So as I say, that's Solden just over there in that valley. You've got Pitztau here. The next valley over in that way is Kunertau, which it was yesterday. And then not that much further away is the Stubai Gletscher and Hintertux. So yeah, tons of skiing and a tiny pocket of Austria. I mentioned in part one about how I wanted to spend as little money as possible on this ski trip, quite simply because I'm an unemployed ski bum and skiing is an expensive sport. But one of the ways that I'm making the biggest savings is this, van life. Typically, the accommodation would be the most expensive thing on any given ski trip, unless you're in America and somewhere like Vail, where you could easily spend $300 a day on your lift pass and potentially be staying in a motel somewhere out of town for only $50 a night. But here in Europe, typically accommodations well over 100 euros a night and lift passes tend to be around 70 euros a day. So yeah, your accommodation is typically your biggest expenditure on any ski holiday. But if you're willing to suffer a little bit and live in a van, then you can obviously you can save a huge amount of money. I definitely couldn't do this in the middle of winter though, at least not in a van this size. It's difficult enough at this time of year when the sun is still reasonably strong, trying to keep everything dry and aired out. Especially as yesterday it was raining when I finished, so I had to get everything into the van wet and sleep in a van with wet kit. So I'm making the most of this nice little sun trap now to dry everything out, everything out as much as possible. Still got a few hours of sun before it goes down behind the ridge, so, so I might actually stay here and cook and eat and then properly dry everything out, but we shall see. So I've decided to take a bit of a rest day today as the weather is pretty pants. Forecast for tomorrow is slightly better, but no guarantees. Then certainly after that, the next two days, it's looking pretty damn good again. Blue skies, so pushing my plans back a day, which it's not the end of the world because this trip is open-ended and it's not really costing me anything to be here because I'm living in the van. So yeah, just doing nothing today today and then I'll be skiing again tomorrow and take it from there. I had driven all the way up to Solden last night, which is where I was planning to ski today only to find that there's basically no free parking anywhere in the entire Otzel Valley. Not only that, but not particularly camper van friendly either. So even if I had wanted to pay for parking, most of the car parks, there's no overnight parking either. Having driven all the way up here, I didn't want to then have to drive all the way back down to the bottom of the valley again just to find somewhere to sleep. So instead I drove a bit further up the valley and headed up at this subsidiary valley here and managed to find this little spot, which is technically a car park. There's a parking sign on the road down there but as you can see it's been taken over by loggers but not all bad because actually it was pretty windy last night and these stacks of logs provided some shelter from the wind and also a little bit of shelter from the rain as well so not the best parking spot I'll ever find but actually it turned out okay 
Another reason for taking a rest day today is I didn't do my research on Solden particularly well. Not only was I caught out by the parking, but I'd also assumed that being a big major ski area, you just take the lifts up to the glacier like you did at Pitstow. But no, actually, you can't get to the glacier via the ski lifts at this time of year. Instead, there's a toll road which you need to drive all the way up. It's actually the highest road in Austria. It goes up well above 2,800 meters. But just like Kunertau, it is free if you've got a lift pass, but I don't yet have a lift pass. And again, there are also ski buses which are free if you've got a ski pass, but again, I don't have the ski pass. So it's going to be a bit more of a logistical headache to actually get up there tomorrow, which is why I'm taking the day today to do some planning and hope we find the tourist information and trying to make sense of it and how I'm going to make it work. Because I could drive all the way up there, but I really don't want to have to drive that far up again using my own petrol wear and tear on the van when I could be sitting on a ski bus instead. So, Oreo Coca-Cola is a thing here in Austria apparently. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Still not sure how I feel about it. I guess it tastes a little bit like an ice cream float or vanilla coke. That's my ski ticket bought for tomorrow so that I can actually use the ski bus. Annoyingly, the price went up arbitrarily yesterday from I think 56 euros to 69. Still one euro cheaper than Kunatau, and you're getting much, much more for that price. But even so, it's annoying when the prices arbitrarily go up. The snow was probably better two days ago than it is now anyway. But there we are. I think I'm just going to have to suck it up and pay for parking because I've not managed to find any cheeky parking spots anywhere in town. So that's another extra six euros as well. But it's still pretty cheaper than the cost of fuel driving all the way up to 2,800 meters and back down again. So yeah, I think I'll be leaving my car in the car park tomorrow, getting the bus up. Hopefully I'm having a good day skiing, but we shall see if the weather plays ball or not. But for now, as it's still absolutely pissing it down with rain, I'm going to go swimming. Spend yet more money. 18 euros, and that's just for the swimming pool. You don't even get the sauna for that. I think it's 25 if you want the sauna as well. Plus, I'm having to pay for parking as well on top of it. So, all in all, Solden turned out to be a pretty expensive place to be. But I've come all this way, so I might as well do it. And there's nothing else to do this evening, so at least I can get a wash. They only charged me 13 euros in the end. I don't know why. Not that I'm complaining. But... I'm suitably refreshed and cleaned and cleansed and everything else, and I'm now back in my one-star log cabin again. But for now, I need to cook some food quickly and get to bed, because I need to be up bright and early tomorrow, so I make sure I don't miss the bus, because there's only two in each direction a day. So yeah, need to make sure I'm there and parked and everything ready for the first bus. You almost certainly won't have heard of either Pitztal or Kunertal. I know I hadn't, but I'm sure many of you will have heard of Solden. Here, they host the opening round of the Alpine Ski World Cup most seasons, as long as they've got enough snow. And this year is next weekend. So as you can see, many of the international ski teams are all here getting ready already. skiing two days ago. The pylon to this lift and the gondola above me is what I can see from over there. So, like I was saying, you really do have a high concentration of ski areas packed into this tiny area of Austria right here. That's what. It's like about five kilometers away. Ski races really are monopolizing the mountain at the moment. I think virtually every piece is at least half closed off for race practice like this. This one's a perfect for racing. It's bullet hard. Absolutely terrible on touring skis and touring boots. Getting down this pitch of the black one here on the side of the race piste is honestly more terrifying than having to ski the Cosmic Cool One Gasio Rond on these skis. I think virtually every senior international ski team in the world must be here at the moment, so if you are a fanboy or fangirl of skiing, it's a great time to come and potentially meet your heroes, potentially even share a lift with them as well. I love their ski tunnels in this part of the world.
was hoping that all that rain we had yesterday would have led to some powder up here, but freezing level was pretty damn high. Something down at the base station here, it was rain. Up top it was snowing, there's maybe a couple of centimetres, but it's not great. I think a lot of it's either blown away or it was just so wet and sticky that it's then frozen overnight as the sky's cleared. So yeah, certainly it's not a powder today. But the snow is slightly better on this side of the mountain. It's softened a tiny bit in the sun and it's just more cut up basically because there's more punter skiing here. And I guess the other side, they've injected the piece for the World Cup races. Whereas this side, it's just it's mostly mere mortal skiing. So yeah, they haven't injected the piece here, I don't think. about it for part two of my ski road trip videos. Of the three areas I've been to so far, I think Pitstow is my favourite. Solden's good, but it's definitely very, very, very race orientated. They all are, that's why they exist at this time of year, but Solden more so than the rest, largely because World Cup's coming here in about a week's time. I think technically Solden's got a slightly bigger area than Pitstow, but a lot of it is blocked off because of the ski racing and as Pitstow is a big bowl, whereas Solden you're skiing on two separate sides of the mountain, Pitstow seems to hold the snow better and indeed gain the snow better. So the snow quality is just slightly better over at Pitstow than it is here. Of course the weather helped and the overhead conditions helped massively, but I think even if it had been sunnier here, the snow still wouldn't have been quite as good as it was at Pitstow the other day. But anyway, tune in for part three, where I'll be heading over to Stubai Gletscher, which again is literally just over the next side of the valley, but it's much more of a drive round to get to this time. It's more of like two and a half hour drive down and back up. So even though as the crow flies, it's just about five kilometers away. It's a pretty sizable, sizable drive to get around. So I'm heading down slightly early because I've got a bit, quite a bit of driving ahead of me tonight. But anyway, tune in next time.